I'm finna do that about Otis and me right now. Yeah, man, they, they, he's a hot item, Butch. Otis is a hot item. If you do him. And then this uh, him. Then this him. Man. And if you got somebody's name you want to say, man, then ask me. His name wasn't Otis Riley. I mean, uh, Reynolds, his name was Otis Stanley. You know what? That's my fault because Neil told me his name was Otis Stanley. So correct that for me. All right, all right. Tell, and tell about that going away party. Neil is the one told me his name was Otis Stanley. Right, yes, right. Neil told me. Right. Yeah, because he did. He's he's doing audio, uh, man. Out, I'm gonna I'm take I'm gonna take right, that listen, yeah. and give a shout out give a shout out to your man at Big Bo a, a true crime Mr. True Crime can Big one minute Mr. True Crime can Big Boss get a shout out from you right now definitely hey I got the shout out Big Boss film the Black Dispatch and my man Otis Stanley rest in peace there we go all right, all right family to all and one last thing but yeah. Why don't you tell about uh, what was I about to tell you? Something about Otis, man. All the niggas y'all used to serve over there at the goddamn building across from the airport. Oh yeah, well, you talking about when I? Oh yeah, I. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know when I got to act because I had I had I had I had about four apartments in that apartment building, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you, and everybody in the city I've seen coming that motherfucker. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And somebody else was running that JC Dugan Dugan used to be over there too, but you know I got Dugan in another apartment in the other building. That was the see, I found out y'all was serving PA. All the day they never did you know Day Day. Yeah, you talking about uh, his daddy name is a short ass daddy. Oh, Day Day Holy, I'm gonna tell you who his daddy is. I'm gonna tell you who his dad daddy is. His daddy is a uh, uh God damn, you know, see, see a lot of things I forget, but I, I'm going to make a phone call and I have his name in a few minutes. Please, I'm going, man. All right, Otis Stanley, he's about one of the best person you can ever meet. He didn't mind helping a person. Me and him did a lot of things together. I'm talking about for years, you understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, we started off, you understand? Like I said, I think I mentioned it before. G introduced me to Otis. Me and Otis started doing a little hustling, getting money and stuff, you know, selling packs and stuff like that, you understand? And then things got kind of big. And then we ran into a, a tight. And so what I can say, we just stopped doing anything. Mm -hmm. I went to Alabama mm -hmm. for a year or two. And at that time, Paul or he was getting big money before I before I left and went to Alabama. But Paul, you understand, me and him was close because we did a lot of things together. So Otis called me and asked me when I coming back. I told him, you understand, I, I'll be back real soon. So he said, man, well, you need to come on back, man, because he said, I got some things together. So I came on back. When I came back, I had been talking to Paul all the time. And Paul, you understand, he was getting, he was having kind of problems. He was having little problems because he was, he had got robbed a couple of times. And Paul, you understand, had a hell of a bankroll. And like I say, me and he was close. We was real close. And he, uh, I went and talked to Otis. Otis told me, he said, man, he said, man, if, he said, we come up with about 30,000, you understand, we'll be back on the map again. So what I did, I went, you understand, and talked to Paul and told Paul what was happening. He asked me, was I planning on staying back, staying in Detroit? I told him, yeah. He said, well, man, what you need? I told him, you understand, me and Otis was trying to get some money together. And uh, he said, well, what? So I told him, you understand, 30000 He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give y'all 50 So he loaned me 50000 And I, me and Otis got together, you understand, and then I had a connect. And he had, Otis had a connect. We was getting Kane and Boy. And I'm talking about that, it got to the point we was getting anywhere from 150 to 200 keys a month. And then two or three keys of Boy. But like I said, things was going real good. I was uh, I was over on the east side, over on uh, Six Mile and Connors, in the apartment buildings across the street from the graveyard. I had four apartments in that building, and uh, and one of our friends, Dugan, I had him apartment in the other building. So like I say, man, you know, we had them coming in and out of that building, man. I mean, selling everything, and and and, and things had got kind of hot. It got kind of hot for me, you understand, because where I was going to get the sales from, the guy me and him was real cool. He told me that the Border Patrol 
that came in there trying to find out who owned that, who phone number that was, that was, they were they were tracking. Mm -hmm. And he told me, and when he told me that man that same day, I relocated, I left the building and everything. But anyway, and that came from just then the guy that had the cell phone to store, you know. Okay. And so uh, after that, me and Otis just then kept on doing what we was doing. Then we messed around there and we, we had got Club Juanitas. And then a year or two later, we had Club Upscales in the Fisher Building. And like I said, they was going all right for us. Otis just then, then I ended up getting married. He was my best man at my wedding and I was the best man in, in his. And so me and him, his, his family and my family, we was going all, all down different islands and stuff. We would be going on vacation all the time. And, and then, like I said, man, when uh, that was going on, we, I, mean, I, I got indicted. Right after that process, I was dealing with the wrong person. This girl, you understand, she was, uh, she was dealing with me, and she had a, a connect with these Africans. In some kind of way or another, you understand, she got caught up in some shit, and then she, you understand, put the feds on me. You understand, because uh, she wanted to buy some, key, some keys that came. What year? This was, uh, this was in 97. This was in 97. Yeah. And so, like I said, when she did that, you understand, I got indicted. Me and Otis still had the club. So he gave me a, we had to go on, a, I had a going away party down there at, at, at uh, Juanita's. And like I said, man, it was, it was niggas from all over the United States, you understand, coming to that party. It was, and like I said, that same particular night, we had Freddie Jackson down there, you understand, you know, uh, you know, in the bar, you understand, before me, you know. And like I said, you know, Otis, when I went to jail, he ended up, you understand, getting killed on Davidson and uh, Woodward. Like I said before, dealing with the wrong people, you know. But uh, other than that, man, I really miss him a whole lot because me and him was real close. Me and him was getting a lot of money. Me and him was getting a lot of money, man. We was going down back and forth down to El Paso, you understand, getting our packages and stuff. Like I say, for years, was, me and Otis, we did a, did a lot of things together, man, you know, as far as with him. And I miss him a whole lot. What was it? What was the uh, time in Vegas like? Anytime we went to Vegas, we had a good time, but we did a lot of traveling to different islands and stuff, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, that down in the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, you know, uh, Virgin Islands and all that, you know. Like, like, like I'm talking right now. This nigga, yeah. this nigga here, yeah. ain't no pleasing him, man. Like his daddy, man, ain't no pleasing him. Ain't no pleasing this man. All right, I'm gonna talk. I mean, I'm gonna act like him. I'm gonna be talking to him, and I'm gonna be talking to you. You see, cause I'd be so dog excited, don't it? Yeah, you'll be a fat boy. Come here, let me tell you this about this. You don't remember this? <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah. All right, but well, you. I'll be talking to y'all later. All right, all right. I love you, man. In a minute. Right, Only Robert Brown Jr. still live, West Africa, to cost Senegal. We're here to talk about a little bit today, which was our follow up project after we had came out with the award winning book, Motown Mafia, Memoirs of King Ben's Kid. I don't know if everyone knows, um, but we actually did another book that wasn't related to the story of my father and Eddie, and that was Mind Right, Money Right. It was kind of our way of giving back. I wanted to share some of the insights and some things that allowed me to have the business success I've had and how that came from it. It's all about exposure, family. You know, when you think bigger, when you've seen bigger, you think bigger. And when you know better, you do better. So as I'm sitting here in West Africa, chapter one in this book is called When We Were Kings. And um, I don't know if you, a lot of people out there, family, may not know that by academia, by schooling, I am a historian. So um, I've always had a great interest in where I am, where I come from, and what I'm about. You know, in fact, just recently, um, I took that an ancestry.com test. They send you a little kit, and uh, you send them a little saliva sample, and they can actually tell you, family, where you come from here. So, like, I'm 60% Nigerian, a little bit from Ghana, a little bit from. Um, what is now Angola. So, because I think, you know, we talk about in this chapter, when we were kings, if we understood that every African-American 
as a cousin and family member here on the continent of Africa, likely in South America. If the brothers and sisters here in Africa understood that they got cousins, we put this thing together and, and we'd be getting money together. And, and once we figure out that whether you're in South Carolina or, or Senegal where I'm at, we all in the same boat together. So, you know, I was reviewing the book when we were teens. The air, you know, we talk about the black man Masa Musa is the richest man that the world has ever known. And that's according to Forbes magazine, right? So if you're not hip on Masa Musa, Google up that name. His empire was right here where I'm sitting now. And just to kind of inspire you, because it wasn't that long ago that a black man was king of this land and controlled the world's oil, or not oil, I'm sorry, controlled the world's gold, silver, salt, and was regarded as he was the richest man of his time and the richest man the world has ever known. And if we understood that we come from kings, that's not just something that the Hotep brothers and sisters be saying, but it's the truth. So we can all do a little bit better. But um, in, in these times we live now, man, with all that's going on, you know, this George Floyd thing, the police shooting us, uh, the things and struggles that's going over here on the continent, and really just we have people of color all over the world, the situation we find ourselves in. You know, give this book a read, man. I'm not just saying as a plug. In fact, I think I'm going to do a little promotion when I get back, really make it accessible. Um, it'll give you some real insights to really be able to connect the dots. That's Getting Off Zero, named after Brother Ray Tatum's company down in Atlanta. You know, we hooked up about, uh, that was in 07, and uh, Big Boss Filmworks and Getting Off Zero have been doing business together ever since. And our theory is simply this, brothers and sisters. If you get your mind right, you'll get your money right. And once you get your money right, you can come enjoy some of this beautiful thing that we call Planet Earth. So holla at your man. Again, 10 year anniversary of Big Boss Filmworks. We are really, really happy and proud. We thank you guys so much. Check out our catalog. Getting off zero, mind right, money right. You want more of the real intel, detailed stories about how Pops and Eddie Jackson, the fat man, put it down in the 70s. Pick up the book, Motown Mafia, Memoirs of Kingpin's Kid. We got Amazon. Check out the doc, Motown Mafia, the story of Eddie Jackson and Courtney Brown. And also, our newest works, Motown Mafia, Big Man on Campus. Give us a shout. 10 year anniversary, Big Boss Filmworks. BigBossFilmworks.com. Salute, peace, and thank you all. I'm out.